51 years ago, a brand new rail transit system opened in the Bay Area, promising to take transportation into the future with no comfort, with comfort, safety and reliability. They named it BART and the public embraced it. But somewhere along the way, things changed. And now the agency is struggling to lure riders onto the trains. So what happened? John Ramos explains. It was in 1947 that a joint Army-Navy report was released recommending that some kind of tube or tunnel be built under the bay to transport troops or material if something should happen to the bridges. From it, the dream of BART was born. As the years went by, the concern was no longer about moving troops, but about moving cars. The Bay Bridge was already, uh, uh, you know, packed uh, every morning uh, with cars, and so uh, there had to be a way to relieve that uh, because there was, you know, people weren't going to be able to get across the bridge anymore. Mike Healy wrote the book on BART, literally. As unofficial historian and a longtime spokesman for the agency, he was there in 1972 when the system first started operating and says those were heady times for the engineers who approached the challenge as if it were a moonshot. Well, BART was the first all new rail rapid transit system, system to be built in this country since 1907. So it was considered the space age system at the time. And it was very exciting. The unofficial slogan among planners was pamper the passenger and magazine ads across the country trumpeted the comfort of this Tomorrowland ride, promising safe, relaxing travel. These are the amenities that give people a new kind of transit experience. I think it was, you know, a very exciting time for the public and the riding public and uh, it, they seem to accept it. There are always little problems, but they seem to accept it. And ridership grew. Did it ever. As the population of the East Bay grew, BART cars became cramped at commute hours. And with more people came more problems. Riders had to put up with rude antisocial behavior and open drug use in aging cars that were often dirty and smelled bad. And then the pandemic hit and people suddenly felt they had other options. We have deep concerns about BART. It's lost about 60% of its uh, average daily riders. Jim Wonderman is CEO of the Bay Area Council, an organization that laid the framework for BART back in the 1950s. He says over the years, the BART board has become focused on various social equity issues, establishing policies that have diminished safety on the trains. He says a recent poll shows that customers are avoiding BART for that reason. The public doesn't see BART as a social service agency. They're not looking for BART to solve the world's problems. You know, they're looking for BART to provide safe, clean, reliable transit. And I think that to some degree, the board got off in some other directions and, you know, needs to really focus on those things, do those things well, and you're going to win people back. So has an agency that runs on rails managed to take a wrong turn? Many believe so but it still has an important role to play in connecting the Bay Area, and there are those who appreciate that. I've been out here like 10 months. I'm from Louisiana, and they don't have anything like this out there. It's a good little system. You know, just don't know what y'all have out here. Like, you should enjoy it, like, use it. Mike Healy agrees. Not all cities have anything, anything close to what BART is like. Now, I think the Bay Area is very lucky to have had BART over the years. The promise still exists, even if not fully delivered. But to convince riders to return, most agree that something big needs to happen to get BART back on track.